Bonjour Genie Engineers, welcome to my Problem a Day series. In this video, we're going to calculate the design moment strength of the giving section. I actually got a very similar problem in my FE exam and that's why I wanted to share it with you guys. Now, if you're here for the first time and you just want to learn about engineering or just how to engineer a better life, don't forget to subscribe and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Now, let's get started. Oh yeah, everybody now. So we are giving a reinforced concrete beam that has an H equals to 24 inches, B is equal to 12 inches, then we have four number nine bars, and then we have a stirrup number four. And we need to find the design moment strength. Before we start solving this problem, I would just like to point out two things. First is in your FE exam, you're only going to get the singly reinforced um, beam. You're not going to get doubly, so do not worry about that. Usually in the PE, you will get a doubly reinforced uh, beam, but for the FE, just focus on the singly reinforced beam. So the second thing that I would like to point out is the three different moments that we have. So if you go to page 159, under the definitions, you will see that we have MN, which is the nominal strength. Then we have PMN, which is the design moment strength. And we have MU, which is the factored moment. So in this problem, we would see the MN and PMN, and then MU, I will just explain it briefly, and then in the future, I will make sure to post a video where we go over a problem where we have to calculate the factor moments. So the difference between MN and PMN is the factor phi. So they're actually the same thing, except for the design moment, we want to multiply it by phi, which is some most times 0 0.9, just so that we can uh, be on the safe side. For the MU, which is the factored moment, that one is the demand capacity of your beam. So for instance, let's say you were giving, I'm just going to do an example here. Um, I'm going to do example factored moments. This has nothing to do with the problem we have, but I just want to briefly go over it because I think it's really important. A lot of students don't know the difference between these three and you can, if you, and if you don't know the difference, you can easily get the wrong answer in your test. So factored moment, so let's say you were giving a simply supported beam and then you have a distributed load, right? So what you do is, um, so you know that the moment for this is going to do to be WL squared over eight, right? Because that's the moment for a simply um, supported beam with the di distributed load. The, uh, the, the thing that makes it factored is that your W distributed load, it has to be 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 live load. That's the only thing that you really have to be careful when you're calculating the factor load. Everything else is really simple. So let's start solving the problem. So first we're going to write the equation. So here we are giving MN, but remember, as we mentioned earlier, the nominal strength is, uh, or the design moment strength is just equal to F phi mn. So you just, we're just going to take this mn and we're just going to multiply it by phi. Another thing is, uh, we're going to calculate here for phi to, so that we can find the design moment strength. However, in my FE exam, I was giving phi is equal to 0 0.9 because I think it just takes a little longer to solve and that's why it was just given to me. But I wanna go make sure that you guys know how to solve it and this is why I wanna solve it here. Okay, so let's write the equation. So we have mn is equal to, so also note here that we have two equations for mn. Uh, I usually like to use the second one just because it's easier and faster to calculate. So let's write that down. So we have the area of the steel times Fy times D minus A over 2. So to be able to calculate, to solve this, we need to find D and we need to find A, right? And we also need to find AS, but it's really easy to calculate AS. So let's first calculate AS. So we have AS, which is the area of the seal, we have four bars, right? Um, number nine. So you're going to come here and you're going to look at the area of number nine bars, which is one inch squared. So you're just going to multiply this by one. So you're going to get four inch squared. So that's the area of the seal. Fy is given to us, it's 60,000 PSI. So for D, in my test, I was given D, but I just want to make sure here I go over it. So just you guys understand 
what really d is so th to calculate the depth it's really it goes from the top of your beam and then all the way down to the center of the bar so that's usually d and usually um, this cover right here it's usually between three and three and a half so let's just do three inches here so it's just easier for us to calculate so what we're going to do is d is going to be h minus the three inch clear cover so i'm going to just write it down here just so that everyone knows where we got the three inch from so if so h is 24 inches minus three inches that gives you 21 inches so that's your d the next thing we need to calculate is a so let's solve that so a we have we are giving the equation a is equal to as times fy divided by 0.85 times f prime c times b okay so as which we calculated here it's four inches squared multiplied by fy so fy is given as psi i usually like to use kips just because it's easier and i don't have to write all the zeros in the calculator and it just takes a lot of time so i'm just going to go ahead and just use uh, 60 because if you take this you divide it by 1000 you get 60. so 60 ksi divided by 0 0.85 multiplied by f prime c so I'm going to use the same thing. It has to be the same, guys, so that way when you cancel your units, you get the right answer. So make sure if you use KIPS here, make sure you use KIPS here as well. So I'm going to use 4 KSI and then times B, which is the depth and that, which is, sorry, the width, and that's equal to 12 inch. So if usually if you want to cancel the units, you're going to get KSI canceled with KSI. You got inch squared cancels with inch here so you're gonna be left out with inch and usually a is in inches so you should get an answer in inches so if you plug in these numbers in your calculator you should get an answer of 5.88 inches so that's your a okay so let's plug in all the numbers in our equation so we have mn is equal to 4 inch squared multiplied by fy which is 60 ksi then we have times d which is 21 inches minus 5.88 inches divided by 2 and i'm going to divide everything by 12 just so i can this is just for conversion because usually mn or the moment is given in units of kips feet instead of kips inches uh, and if you don't divide by 12 you're going to get an answer of kips inches okay so this should give you an answer of 361.2 kips feet but we're not done yet so we just calculated mn but the answer asks for the design moment strength and this means phi mn so we need to calculate phi now. So to calculate phi, it's a little bit tricky. So there's no straightforward equation for it. So first we need to actually find the, uh, the tensile strain. So we have 0 0.003 multiplied by D minus C. We divide that by C. So we don't have C, but we are giving a in terms of c so we can calculate that easily so i have a is equal to beta times c you just rewrite the equation c is equal to a over beta a is given we we calculated it which is 5.88 and then beta you can actually find it in the definitions right here if you look for it is the ratio of the depth of the rectangular stress block to the depth to the neutral axis and you can just calculate it using this equation so i'm not going to write the equation because it's really simple i have 4000 which is f prime c minus 4000 that's zero zero times 0 0.05 again it's zero so i have 0 0.85 so my beta is going to be 0 0.85 
So once you plug in this number, you will get an answer of 6.92. So now that you calculated C, you can come here. You have 0. Uh, 0 0.003 times D, which is 21, minus C, which is 6.92. And then you divide that by 6.92, and you get an answer of 0 0.006. So your ET is actually larger or greater than 0 0.05. Um, so if you look at the equations right here, you have ET, if it's greater or equal to 0 0.05, your phi is equal to 0 0.9. So from here, or let me write it here so that we have more space. Let me create more space. So we have the tensile strain is equal to 0 0.006, which is greater than 0 0.005. So therefore, phi is equal to 0 0.9. So my phi nn is going to be 0 0.9 multiplied by 361.2 kips phi. And this should give you an answer of 325.08 kips phi. I would also like to mention one more thing that when you're actually dealing with moment, Make sure that your phi nn is always greater or equal to your demand capacity or the factored moment mu. This is very important so that way that your design does not fail. That's why we always want f phi nn to be greater than the actual demand capacity of the moment that of the beam that we have. So just keep this in mind. Okay guys, so don't forget, a problem a day keeps the F away. And if you guys have any questions or problems that you would like me to go over, please leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and make sure you share with your friends who might find it helpful. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you soon. À la prochaine!